Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We try to keep it tasteful each and every week, but discretion is advised. Now enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Del Marva. It's a bumpy ride as we head out in search of one of the bay's most coveted fish. But will patience pay off with a red drum on the end of the line? Then they're known for their fins and mouth full of sharp teeth. But now local anglers need to learn some new shark regulations. Get some catch and release tips from Ocean City's shark expert. And nature's newest miracles are arriving. What's best if you have a chance encounter? Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. <laughs> Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. We'll be checking in with my partner, Captain Willie Dykes, in just a few minutes. Well, here we are, another week of adventures, and we're going after another species of fish. This time around, red drum. Yes, one of the Chesapeake Bay's most coveted fish. Also, a pretty tough fish to catch. But if we're going to do it, well, we picked a pretty good time of day with the sun slowly setting behind us. It was the kind of week where if you planned to go fishing, it was bound to rain. So instead, we took the last minute approach, hopped aboard the Miss Behaven, and set out from Cedar Hill Marina in Wicomico County. Well, we wanted to fish a lot more this week, but the way the wind's been blowing and the weather's been, it's pretty much been the only night we've had a shot, so. Pat Tobat knows these waters well, and so does his buddy, Brian Catlin. From the Nanticoke River, we make a bumpy transition into the Tangier Sound with the plan to eventually find the type of water that schools of red drum like to hang out in. Yeah, we'll keep our anchor up here, see what we do. And after about a 35 minute haul, it's decision time as we decide to stay on the sound, fishing off a few barrier islands that'll give us at least limited protection from choppier conditions out on the bay. Running four rods, uh, circle hooks, and about six foot of water. Um, and just keeping the drag reel loose, let them take it, suck on it, swallow it, and then. Hopefully hook up with a nice red. Red drum are a fighting fish and a favorite of Eastern Shore anglers. But their elusiveness and short window for gathering in hot spots can lead to frustration. But with four lines in the water and bait on the bottom, we've at least got a good chance at catching something else while we wait. Got a skunk off the boat. There's a nice little Chesapeake Bay hardhead for you right there. Now, croakers can be fun, but it's not what we're after tonight. And as the sun begins to set, it's going to make or break our chances. Evening has been a lucky time of day for Pat and Brian in the past, but with possible rain moving into the area soon, we know the clock is ticking. And ticking. And ticking. But as quickly as an angler's confidence can drop with the setting sun, the sound of a screaming drag can set your spirit soaring sky high. Yes, sir, that's him. It's a sure thing. Brian has hooked into a whopper, the coveted red drum. How close are you? Uh, right here. I got you. After a 15 minute fight, Pat lowers the net and gently brings this beast aboard. That's what we're after. That's what you got, buddy. That's it's a beauty. Right there you go, buddy. Still green. There he is. Get a spot. Due to an exhausting fight, Brian is careful to set the drum gently back into the water and holds her close, allowing the fish to regain its strength slowly until it gives the sign that it's ready to swim away. Awesome. Mike, I didn't lie to you, buddy. You were thinking that for a minute, weren't you? No, huh? sir, I never lose the faith. Huh? For these experienced drum fishermen, it's a point of pride. Bringing even one whopper to the boat on a night like this is a good trip. Dodging storms and testing their patience 
has paid off with a priceless experience. Right. That's Red Drum. On now we're outdoors, Del Mar, but That's WBOC right, 16, baby. <laughs> Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva. Catching a shark can be fun, but the rules are changing. See the ethical approach from the expert. But first, did you know? Red drum are closely related to black drum and share a common appearance. But can you name another smaller Chesapeake Bay favorite also in the drum family? The answer when we come back. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice, and Goody's Marine. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Get away from it, you can go. There you go. Awesome. Did you know? While smaller than its relatives, the red and black drum, the Atlantic croaker, or hardhead, is also a member of the drum family of fish. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. Well, I know for many of us, just a glimpse of the open water can take your breath away. <laughs> Some things never change. Then again, other things do. And if you're an angler hoping to hook up with one of nature's intimidators this summer, you want to see this first. Let's face it, Hollywood has given sharks a bad name. But truth be told, the chances of really encountering a shark in the wild are slim to none for most. Now you do, however, stand a much better chance if you're an angler in the 31st annual Ocean City Shark Tournament in a few weeks. There's going to be a lot more catch and release of sharks going on by our competitors. You know, sharks are taking hits uh, from all over the world from many different angles, and the populations in some places aren't doing so well. So, so critical that anybody, including uh, recreational fishermen, uh, treat the sharks in, in uh, a proper manner, good ethical fishing practices. It's been estimated that up to 100 million sharks are killed each year due to commercial and recreational fishing including blue sharks and makos, both heavily fished. This, uh, the circle hooks are a very effective hook at catching sharks or any other type of fish. Uh, In anticipation of regulation changes, Ocean City's shark guru, Mark Sampson, is showing other anglers how to best protect this misunderstood ocean resource. A good appreciation of, of sharks, you know, is a very valuable and necessary resource the oceans. There's not much point if you turn a fish loose and he dies anyway. Now some of the devices used in responsible shark release practices are deceptively simple but entirely ingenious. All the tournament participants when they're fishing for sharks have got to use a circle hook and of course this is this unique circular design as opposed to the standard J hook that most people are accustomed to using. Conventional hooks that, that have a tendency to hook a fish deep in the, in the gut or the, um, or, or the gills or something. The circle hook will usually latch onto the jaw so that you know, if it's going to be released, it stands a much better chance of, of survival. This is called a blocker rig, which was specifically designed to also prevent a shark from swallowing the, the hook all the way down and, and potentially getting hooked in, in the gut. It had great success with this. So this is something else that we're sort of introducing to the uh, the public. We're demonstrating the use of, of the uh, arc uh, Z hooking tool, which is what this is, and this is designed to actually safely, for the fisherman, remove a hook from the jaw of, of, a, of a shark. With this tool, you're actually able to slide it down to the hook, and then it latches onto the hook, and with a uh, a steady push, you can knock the hook out of the, the fish's mouth. So that's good for the fish and that he didn't have to swim around and wait for the hook to rust out of his jaw. It's good for the fisherman because he gets his hook back. He doesn't have to buy another hook. Because we have minimum size limits on different types of sharks that can be brought back to the dock, um, we want to give our anglers the ability to actually measure the fish in the water to determine whether it's a keeper or something they have to throw back. We've got some, some loops. These loops are all at pre-measured distances 
from the lure down there. There's a leader that goes to the fish. With the, the boat moving ahead slowly, they'll snap this on and let that slide down to the mouth of the fish. If the lure is behind the fish, the fish is too small. If the lure is in front of his tail, then he's a keeper size. For those who seek out shark for sport, make sure you are familiar with the recent additions to shark regulations. For instance, a movement to crack down on those who may intentionally seek to catch protected species like sand tigers. It's important that people know how to handle them properly uh, at the boat side, so when the shark goes home, you know, he goes home to live a long, happy life. Taking the time to carefully release sharks caught during this and other tournaments will help to further protect these citizens of the deep. For more on the latest shark fishing regulations and more on the Ocean City Shark Fishing Tournament, go to OutdoorsDelmarva.com. Still to come on Outdoors Delmarva, nature's newest arrivals are here and hiding. Know what's best should you have a chance encounter. Stay with us. Mike and Captain Willie have more adventures to come. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Mike Parker, and I'm here outside of Smyrna, Delaware today at the Woodland Beach Wildlife Field Office, yeah, a place where a lot of the Denrec wildlife biologists keep their offices. And what brings me out here to Kent County today was actually the chance to pick up this DVD. On here is some footage that one of the guys put together for me featuring a chance encounter, which also serves as a pretty good reminder this time of year. What you're looking at here is video taken on a cell phone about a year ago at this time when some Delaware turkey hunters discovered that they weren't the only ones trying to stay stealth in this patch of woods. Uh, we're here at the Woodland Beach Wildlife Area at one of our field offices. There's For Denrec wildlife. deer biologist Joe Rogerson, the arrival of fawns like the one caught on the cell phone camera is a miracle of nature and the sign of a thriving natural resource. But these few precious weeks on either side of Memorial Day arrive with an honest dose of concern, too, as inevitably... Areas like this, uh, early successional habitats, you know, the edges of woods with a grassy area, those are great places for deer to live, great place for a doe to find a secluded spot to give birth to a fawn. Each year, people will come across these babies while in their most sensitive of states. And many, uh, many folks think that these fawns are abandoned. Um, you know, their doe is gone or something happened to the mother. In reality, that's not the case. Uh, the survival strategy for fawns, our doe will give birth and they generally have two fawns. She will hide them separately, normally about a couple hundred yards apart, where when they're born, they virtually have no scent. They'll lay motionless to try and hide from predators or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but the doe is nearby. She's also probably a couple hundred yards away and will come every four hours or so and actually nurse the fawns and then get them to lay back down and hide. So if you come across one, they're actually fine. They're doing what they're supposed to do and hiding out there to try and it just so happens that you came across them. But when human instinct to help kicks in, the result could end up doing more harm than good. If that animal is not abandoned, and you get your scent, you know, from you handling that animal on there, it could then cause the doe, as she comes back, to smell your scent on there and abandon her fawn at that point. She'll be scared of it. So if you do come across one that you think something happened to the mother, call us and then we'll, you know, act accordingly on that situation and try and figure out if it really is abandoned. So a pretty important message this time of year. And you know, we all have compassion for animals and those tiny little fawns, boy, they can really tug at your heartstrings if you think that they're being abandoned. You have to remember though, even the tiniest, newest wild animals have wild instincts they're still honing in on. So the more we do to let them be wild, they'll have a much better chance to survive. And now it's time to visit with an old friend. Here's this week's Scorchy's Corner Classic. It has been said that you can question a man's ancestry, ridicule his wife, but don't knock his bird dog. That is unforgivable. Last Sunday, there were a buku of bird dogs and their handlers at Owen Station Shooting Preserve in Greenwood for the annual spring field trials. And they were there for a good reason. Winning in these trials that we hold means building your point standing 
throughout the United States so that your dog can compete in larger trials and, if capable, go on to the nationals. And if your dog can make it to the nationals, held every year in Tennessee, you have a good chance of entering dogdom's answer to Fort Knox. The bucks are big at the end of the road for breeding purposes and also possible sales even to foreign countries of your dogs. As each class began, the bird hunters were out in front on foot, then the judges on horseback, and bringing up the rear, the spectators on a straw-filled, bouncy flatbed pulled by an ancient track. When it finds game, it is to remain on point and be steady to wing and shot. The dog must back, and the dog must display a retrieve to the judge. These are the moments a bird dog lives for. While some breeds live to lie in front of crackling fireplaces, some to chase cats and others to sniff fire hydrants, these dogs are born to sniff out birds. They give a person a chance to show off his or her dogs, tell how their dog got its name. What's your dog's name? Littles. Why do you call her Littles? She ain't very big, I saw I called her Littles. Scorchy Dogs wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Still to come on Outdoors Del Marva. A good cleaning can help you get a good clean shot. We'll take a trip to the area's premier gun shop. Don't go anywhere. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Hi everybody and thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker, back here again with one of the fine sponsors of our program, Shooter's Choice, located in Dover, Delaware, always on target with all your shooting needs. And the best part about coming here is you get to deal with the experts, guys like Dave Lawson. How you doing, hey, Dave? Mike, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you too. Dave, what sets Shooter's Choice apart from the rest? Well, we're kind of a one-stop shop. We don't peddle firearms, we do mandate safety. And to that end, when you buy a firearm here, included in the price is two hours of range time and or an individual hour of training. Well, what do you say we take everybody through the process right now? And first things first, we've got to pick out a gun. Well, one of the ones that I would recommend is the Springfield. Springfield, one of the most popular firearms that we sell here. Obviously, the magazine is out, magazine in, you hit the release. You check to make sure the gun is empty, there's nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine. The control on the side is a slide release, it lets the slide go forward. All right, Dave, well, a new gun and maybe my first time on the range can be a little intimidating, but you guys can put me at ease. Absolutely, we'll have you squared away with a gun. You'll be very much at ease with it, you'll be comfortable with it, you'll be able to leave with it and feel that you have what you need at that point. So we'll get to shoot and keep safety first. Nice shot. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. <laughs> and when you have a quality firearm, you want to use quality products to maintain and clean it. Yes, and what we have here is a, a kit from Gunslick, and it covers rifles, shotguns, and handguns. When it's dirty, it wears out a lot faster because you've got carbon in there, and every time that gun works, it, it wears the gun out. If you keep it well cleaned and oiled, the gun will last a very long time. It's just as easy as that. Sure is. Dave Lawson, thanks again. It's been great. I am really impressed with this whole process. Well, thank you. Don't forget, you still have two hours of range time coming. Well, I guess I'll be back soon. <laughs> From safety, customer service, maintenance, and training, Shooter's Choice, always on target. We'll be right back. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, the viewer venture cam is back when we join some local kids at a bass fishing tournament. Plus, your latest viewer pictures. Outdoors Del Marva viewer pictures are sponsored by North Bay Marina. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice and Goody's Marine. Well, you know, we've reeled in some pretty big species this week, including red drum and sharks. 
think we'll tone it down a little bit here for this last segment. But, you know, catching smaller fish doesn't mean any less fun. Hey, Mike and Captain Willie, welcome to Sunny Sea for Delaware. We're here for the Real Expectations Mel Sheshpine Cast for Kids Benefit Tournament. I know it's a mouthful, but uh, a few years back, the Delaware Bass Federation lost their vice president. He was a huge youth advocate. And in his passing, we set up a scholarship fund in his name. And each year, we put on this adult youth tournament to raise money for that scholarship fund. Our friend Ralph Newberry took the viewer venture cam out on the water to make sure we didn't miss the recent Real Expectations Bass Fishing Tournament. Now this event is all about supporting local youth, putting rods and reels in their hands to boost confidence through the sport of fishing. As you can see, these youngsters weren't messing around, bringing some nice fish aboard their boats and achieving some great results and having boatloads of fun too. Hold on, John. Mike, Captain Willie, we've had a great day here in Seaford, Delaware at the Mel Pine Tournament. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to you. And we appreciate the viewer adventure camp and everything it's done for us today. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Ralph. And we want to say congratulations to everybody involved in the Real Expectations Fishing Tournament. It's time now to take a look at some of the photos sent in by our own Outdoors Delmarva viewers. Mark Tilly from Federalsburg caught a 33-inch rockfish on the final day of the trophy rock season. Mark and friends were fishing on the Chesapeake Bay. Great looking fish. Here's a youngster with a nice story to tell. Alex Kephart from Church Creek, Maryland shot a nice gobbler during Maryland's youth turkey hunt. Pictured on the left is Alex's dad, Jason, and also Chip Toll, who did the successful calling. Congratulations, guys. And Tommy McDonald from Seaford is a bow fisherman we've seen before, <laughs> and he had a pretty amazing night out on the Nanticoke River recently. Tommy and his friends weren't messing around when they encountered dozens of gar and other species. <laughs> wow. Well, we love sharing your outdoor photos here on the show, so please keep them coming. You can email me at mparker at wboc.com or upload your photos to our Facebook page. Boy, it is hard to believe the Memorial Day weekend is already here and almost gone already. And as we recognize the unofficial beginning of the summer season, we also want to recognize the men and women who lost their lives serving our country. God bless America. For Captain Willie Dykes, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva.